All right, good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to the Thursday edition of the Digital Shop Talk webinar. Uh, and today we're gonna start a little bit of a different format. Um, actually, before I get started, Marty, are you seeing my screen okay? I can. You see the whole, let me get it into present mode. You yep. see everything or is it cut off? Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, that little, it was looking weird. Okay, sorry about that. I want to make sure that we were uh, um, broadcasting correctly. Uh, today we're going to, is the first day we're going to start a little bit of a different format than what we've done in the past. And we've moved the webinar to Thursday following the Wednesday Digital Shop Talk Radio. And so the concept is going to be we're going to talk on the radio about improvements with with shop owners and let them tell us how they implemented and kind of the the challenges to the implementation and then also the benefits of that implementation uh, so you kind of hear it directly from the shop owners themselves or service writers or techs or whoever we have on the radio show and then on Thursday we're gonna come in and we're gonna talk about how you actually get that stuff set up so so give you some ideas on Wednesday and then show you how to do them on Thursday. And so today's going to be the first uh, day that we implement that format. And this is a follow-up to the uh, Digital Shop Talk radio show from yesterday, Higher Shop Productivity Through Digital Communication. And so if you listened to the show yesterday, we, uh, Marty and I, oh, and let me introduce Marty. So I've got Marty back today with me for the webinar. Uh, so I've got Marty Mason. He's our senior digital trainer. Uh, Marty, say hi, buddy. Thanks for coming in. Everybody's having a great day. Look, glad to be back today. And uh, and Marty's, you know, Marty's been, he's he's uh he's he's been, you know, in a high volume shop, multi shop location, I believe. On huh, Marty. Yep. Two two very high yeah. volume shops. Yeah. And so and so, you know, uh, really great resource on how to you know use the tools smartly to um, get things done, improve productivity improve efficiency, improve profit, all that good stuff. And so he's going to give us some insights and some tips and stuff like that on setup. Um, and so, you know, of course, as always, feel free to chat in your questions, um, all that good stuff. Uh, hit the chat button or the Q&A button, and, um, and we'll answer your questions live. If you didn't get a chance to listen to the radio show, you can always find it on the Facebook forum. It's recorded and it's posted up there. And it's also... Uh, posted up in our help dot auto vitals uh, website there under the under the webinars uh, and you can find that stuff there and we look forward to uh, having you in the audience uh, every Wednesday and then and then follow up for the good stuff and, a, and an idea for you too is maybe you catch a, the radio show on Wednesday and it's a good topic maybe it's for text feel free to bring your text in or your service writer or your shop manager in on the Thursday webinar because this is where we're going to be going over the nuts and bolts so yesterday's episode was was really really good about you know about improving communication uh, not so much from the chat side of it but from the special marker side of it. So we wanted to go through today and talk to you about what types of special markers you can set up, what are some of the the challenges in the shop, and we talked about a little bit yesterday is to say you know engage with your technicians and service writers and 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 or think about kind of those things that are reoccurring all the time, right? The questions that you get on a regular basis and can they be solved by creating a special marker, adding it to the uh, vehicle tile, which of course these special markers also show up on the technician's tablet. And so you've got that bridge of communication there without having to really do a lot of writing and typing or walking and talking. And um, but you're still doing very highly effective communication. And so we'll talk about today setting up some markers and how that we can also associate those or, or tag those markers to a vehicle over time so that every time that vehicle comes back in, certain markers might always apply to it, like where's the wheel lock key or something like that. Um, you know, vacuum the floor because somebody might be very, you know, specific about that or something that you want to just have happen every single time. And we'll talk about how you get that done and kind of show you in the back end how we do the setup. So we've got a couple different, you know, over here you'll see we've got some different kind of uh, uh, names or categories of special markers. And special marker, 
uh, you know, in our vernacular, just going to be any marker that you can add to the vehicle tile that, you know, from the icon itself uh, communicates something to me. It's a manual uh, addition. You click one of these plus buttons, and you know, this is kind of my, my uh, I, you know, I have to admit my collateral's uh, uh, a little outdated from the vehicle, the way the vehicle tile looks, but you still get the idea. Is you click the uh, plus button, add your special marker from the drop down, and then the tech and the service rider both see in this case, you know, hey, this was a walk in customer. Um, pretty simple. We've got smart markers that um, allow us to, um, through our integration with your point of sale, actually read the job line and then do something. So, as an example, let's say I put on here a smart marker for synthetic oil change. And I go ahead and I select the synthetic oil change. Uh, excuse me, let me take that back. I go ahead and add the synthetic oil change into my uh, uh, RO. And if I've got that, if I've got that special marker set up, it's going to automatically pull that marker onto the tile, and it's going to show me, um, and it's going to actually send the information out to the tech that hey, this is synthetic, and it's and it's going to change if you want. It can change the inspection sheet that he uses to say your quick lube, right? So, so you know, car comes in for a for a lube oil filter change. Uh, I throw the job line in there. It, it, it changes now the technician's inspection to uh, a quick lube inspection. That's one of the scenarios that you can that you can have happen. Marty, in your shop, were you ever using smart markers uh, in that fashion? We, we have not got to that yet, um, but we we had some talks back and forth. Of, uh, you brought up the oil change, um, you know, for a brake inspection, doing doing a picture of brakes. Um, we'd also even talked about building, you know, a, a canned labor line for a waiter. Um, again, just to simplify it, so it was automatically pulling it up that we could show on those titles that boom, it's waiting, boom, brake, boom, oil change inspection. Well, see, that's that's a genius idea right there, right? It's just building a job, a can job, and just call it waiter. And so then you see that the customer's a waiter or or whatever it is that you might, you know, want to put on. Um, great idea. And so then that's how flexible it is, right? And so if you look at it from the perspective of I'm trying to solve something, right? I'm trying to shave off an extra step or, or you know, an extra uh, couple of minutes um, in communication, um, that's the level that you can take it to. And I, I've never, to be honest with you, Marty, I've never even thought about that, right? Because I don't spend all my day at the, you know, in the shop at the counter, buddy. But um, brilliant, right? Create a job, add it to the RO, and then stuff automatically happens from a communication perspective that would have took you five, ten, you know, minutes before typing notes, printing paper, and all that good stuff. Right? Tom, let's let's just say that you know I, I have to get up from my desk, um, you know, and walk out to the shop to ask the technician. You know, if, if say that takes three minutes to go talk to the technician and get back, if I have to do that 15 times a day. I freed up 45 minutes of my day right there. Yeah, there you go. And, and we'll show some. We'll show the results of that from a shop's uh, KPI perspective here towards the end. And we'll show we'll show what's possible. For, you know, in the metrics of ARO and and service advisor efficiency increases uh, when you get fully adopted into uh, communicating uh, with the special markers. The last marker that we have, we call them ultimate markers, right? And ultimate markers, um, we can make them permanent. Uh, and we and it allows us to manage time, right? So those are those cool markers that we came out with, uh, you know, I don't know, six months ago, eight months ago, whenever it was, that allow you to set timers, right? Or, or in this case, maybe a static type clock that just that just posts a time up for you. And here we can see uh, in this marker, it's also got the parts denoted. So I know that this is a parts delivery marker, and the expected time is new. Um, or I. Maybe my vendor tells me I'll be there in an hour. So I set a marker that actually counts down from an hour. I can set markers if I wanted to time anything. If I want to time how long it took for the guy to come back from his road test or something. Pop a marker, run a timer, right? Anything that you want to start to measure in the shop that you don't normally have, a, a, you know, the ability to do without kind of going way outside of your normal process, you know, standing there with a stopwatch or something, and the guy's like, why are you look breathing down my neck, right? Here you can just boop, put up a marker, start running a timer, and start to start to track things. 
Uh, what are some of the uh, the ways that you guys used uh, timer markers or the ultimate markers, Marty? One of the ways was um, that we were we were morphing into was phone calls. Um, how many times has everybody out there, you know, had a customer on the phone and hey, hey Tom, I promise I'm gonna call you back in an hour. And then you know the, the building starts on fire. This happens. This happens. This happens. And now now it's an hour and a half into it, and then you forgot to call your customer. Now you got an upset customer. You missed a deadline. Uh, phone calls is a really great way to use it um, if you, if you make a promise to call somebody back. Um, you know, before this, we were using the old kitchen egg timers, you know, going off every two hours to remind us, um, you know, and that was kind of to call everybody and, and maybe not everybody needed a call. Maybe ticket one, Mrs. Jones, maybe, maybe her car is, uh, you've talked to her, she's going out of town. I don't need that data until tomorrow. Don't need to set a marker for her. The next customer I promised him in 30 minutes, the next one I promised in an hour, those markers just helped me do that to multiple people and still meet my commitments. No, that's a great idea. And, you know, I was just thinking when you're saying that, you know, one thing you might want to do, let's say you had a guy who like, likes to, you know, spends a lot of time talking and it's great, you know, hey, you want people building rapport and relationships with your customers, but, you know, a guy likes to be a little long-winded and maybe you just put a little reminder marker, hey, you know, c cut your phone calls down to five or 10 minutes, you know, and try to give them a visual indicator until he develops the muscle memory and builds the habits of being brief and to the point and still being friendly and still doing all of that good stuff. But, knocking it out in, in an appropriate amount of time so that we can, you know, boost again, the goal is to boost that uh, productivity and efficiency at the front counter. Absolutely. I like that. And see, thanks. So let's dig in. So um, when we want to configure uh, markers and we want to make them stick, we've got a little box in here now, right? And so I can tag a marker and that's going to make it stick across visits. Okay. And I can go ahead and just click on a marker to configure, right? And so when once I have that up, um, you know, it's pretty simple uh, hierarchy tree here. You just kind of go through, select the markers, get into the configuration. So in this case, we've selected a parts to be delivered marker. And then we go ahead and go in and configure it. And so it's pretty simple. Uh, you know, just simple drop down. It's going to count in um, in minutes. So in this case, you know, 120 minutes, two hours, um, and and configure your time like that. Save it, and it's ready to go. And it's going to start counting. When it gets down to zero, it's going to blink, and it's going to give you an indication that hey, that's the alarm going off, and something's supposed to be on the counter or in the parts bin. <laughs> you better go find out. Marty, did you have something to add? I, I just I wanted to add that the one thing that I love about this feature, especially in a high volume shop, is you know how many times do you get an idea on the fly and you want to implement it right now? With these special markers, it literally takes virtually no time to, to set one of these up. It is not difficult at all. Yeah, that's a great point because and, and, and really if you train the guys to say, you know, to, to, to start to build these things on the fly when they run into these um, types of situations. It's like, again, especially if they're repetitive and it's always kind of one of those things that just is, is slowing us down. It's just, you can just fire off a special marker right now. You don't even have to worry so much about the, about the image. Uh, and you can always go back and, you know, clean that up towards the end of the day or something or overnight if you want to download the image and change out the, the icons and things like that, because, you know, it's a simple, picture upload. So find something on the internet or build something in your, you know, on your computer in a graphics program or something and then uh, upload it and attach it. Oh, and here we'll talk about that a little bit on how to get that done. So, you know, the watch marker is going to be used to set a static time, right? It's a time of day. Uh, so, so those could be used for, for anything that's going to have a set time. A countdown marker of course, just like the name implies, it's going to count down. Um, and again, you can upload an image in there in the back end. And then we're going to talk about the tech notes. Um, and actually, I think I have my picture out of place, but I'll, I'll grab it for you to show you. And there's a Facebook forum uh, uh, discussion going on right now. And this, and this is uh, really relevant to that as well, if you folks have been following that Facebook forum discussion. But, but what's going on there is that, um, uh, you know, they're talking about how if the tech's got the tablet open and, and he's in the RO, they're not seeing the, the, the alerts. And 
there's a couple, you know, of, of solutions there um, that still follow the best practices of the digital shop and the digital communication. Um, and some of them are going to be uh, easier than others. What the first thing is, is that inside of the tablet, the tech should be able to see his alert that he has a message. It's, you know, I, I know it's, it's in a small place, but if they get in the habit of checking it, um, and, and so that might be just a little bit of a, 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 of a, of a process change for the tech to just kind of every once in a while, he's got to remember to oh, just open his, open up his tablet and just take a look at the RO, right? Um, okay, you know, he still has to interrupt what he's doing. He still has to remember to go do it. It, it might, might be something that's critical and, um, you know, he's going to check it every, you know, if he's on a big, big enough job, you know, maybe, you know, he's going to put an hour straight into something and you know, he's got to remember to go over there every 15 minutes and open this thing up. And, and that, that, that's, that's kind of the opposite of what we're trying to accomplish. So, so the other thing, of course, we could do is start is, is use like the Vib alerts, right? You can order up some Vib alerts, they Bluetooth into the, into the tablet. And now he doesn't have to go look at the tablet and it's going to be automatic because once there is a, a, a note, a, a message or, or a notification going out to that tablet, it's going to vibrate that uh, pellet, that Vib alert. It's going to let the tech know that now is a time I have something to, to go look at on the tablet. Some information has just come in for me. And then, of course, the tech can finish what he's doing uh, without, you know, the tap on the shoulder or having to remember to go do it finish what he's doing, finish torquing that bolt or whatever he might be doing, and then go and, and open up that, that tablet. But it's going to be in a, in a you know, uh, good response time because he's just finishing up what he's at. He knows he's got a message waiting that he has to go check. I think the, the other thing Tom, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Create, creating that sure. habit is very important. Um, you know, they're, they're using this just like any tool or in wrench in their toolbox. Um, it's just one of those we have to create a tablet. Um, change that behavior to where we're, we are paying attention to it, whether it's every 30 minutes, maybe you have to go to your toolbox, get a different screwdriver, you're taking a peek at it. Creating that habit is very important. Yeah, and it, you know, and it's, there's a lot of ways, you know, there's some ways to think, because most guys, you know, they got to leave their RO open, so they open the RO and they're going to get to work, and maybe I leave the tool, you know, the, uh, the tablet on my roll away or something like that. Um, and, and it's, and it's not, maybe it's not as convenient, right? It's not right next to me. I've seen some shops where they have like a bandolier or like a, a sling and they just, and they have the tablet kind of just over their shoulder, right? Or in a holster even. Okay. Uh, that might be a good solution for you. And, um, there's also case makers out there that use rare earth magnets, uh, on the case so it doesn't disrupt all the circuitry of the electronics. And then think about it, you can just slap that tablet to a, you know, a radiator uh, 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 mount or something like that, you know, and or anything that's metal. Of course, you have to remember to pull that tablet off of there before, <laughs> before the vehicle <laughs> drives away, right? But, but I mean, it's a pretty cool way where you can just stick it to something and it's in the tablets right there next to you and get in the habit, you know, kind of like you stick your shop light on, you know, your magnetic shop light or something uh, and just uh, have it next to you, you know, uh, especially if you're doing lookup, right? Because, you know, if you're, if you're in Identifix or you're, you know, looking up uh, some data or something like that, hey, the tablet's right there. It's mounted. It's almost just like a touchscreen monitor and boom, boom, boom. And you're looking up your data while you're in, you know, at, under the hood. So you don't have to go to a workstation or go, go again back to the rollaway. So, uh, you know, nice way to think kind of outside the box and, 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 and catch some efficiency gains there. What do you think, Marty? Yeah, no, I totally like it. You know, it's interesting. One, one of the things, um, you know, like five years ago in one of our shops and we implemented this and we were worried about, you know, how, how often would we go through these tablets or would they get broken in that environment? And in five years, I can count yeah. on one hand how many times we've broken them and only one time did we shut one in a hood. It's, you know, it's just like any, any tool that you use, you, you, you learn to take care of it. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's funny when we first started, you know, and, and because, that, that was one of the first objections, you know, early in the game, right? When we were introducing digital inspections out in the market, people say, like, that thing wouldn't last a day in my shop. And so I just punted across, 
at the tree jaw and just punt it like a football, right? Really? Slam it on the ground because it, it's pretty incredible how um, – how strong they really are. Um, you know, you get a good enough case. The cases we ship have dust covers and hard uh, screen covers. And I mean, you can dunk them in a solvent tank and you know, blow it off with the, with the uh, air and go right back to work, you know, because they, uh, you know, of course, if you have it sealed up good, you got your covers shut, but um, uh, they're, they're very robust. They're very robust. Um, this marker that we're talking about here, this is a, this is manual though. And so in that Facebook form, you might've saw a response from, uh, Chris about, about that. And, we, and I want to address that right now on how you get that done. So it, it's create a special marker and that special marker is tech note. And so what the service writer would have to do, if there is an urgent update, he needs to get to the tech, he would just pop that tech note in there, go in and add his notes. And I, I have my slide out of place, so forgive me real quick. I'm going to come over here, and then we'll back up. This is what it's going to look like on the tech side when he gets it, right? So it's going to kick the audible alert. It's going to pop up, and uh, it's going to stay there until he uh, dismisses it. So, so you know he catches the message. And then the message that you write in a special marker uh, will show up just like this. Okay, so that that's uh, that's how you would use that solution that they're talking about in the uh, in the Facebook form right now. Uh, again, it is going to be a manual step. The service writer will need to just you know just like these other special markers we were showing, he's going to go in there and um, and click the button add the marker. Okay, so uh, gosh, I talked a lot. Um, <laughs> we have five minutes left, so we better get cracking. We got any questions, Marty? Before I get into this one. Right now, we have no questions, but if anybody has any, feel free to shoot. We're, we're here to try to help out and answer as many as we can. Yeah, and usually that's, that's what happens buddy, when I run the webinars is because I'm so efficient and, and, and uh, I deliver so high, uh, clear knowledge that nobody has any questions. I love it. So, um, so let's continue. Um, let's, th let's talk a little bit about uh, how to get uh, those on. And, and like we said, um, you know, kind of that, uh, do we want lots of options or do we want as few clicks as possible? Uh, and so, you know, we're, we, we really, I think, designed this to be, um, you know, the best of both worlds, right? Fast drop downs to select your markers. Uh, the markers can be prioritized um, by, you know, first choice. So those are the ones like your favorites, right? So bing, bang pretty fast to get to them and then uh, click to edit as well so that they can make changes and updates on the fly. And it looks like this, as soon as I click on that, I'm gonna get uh, update a special marker. I can group them. So that's how I would move it, let's say into my first choice column there or uh, menu, I should say. And then I'm gonna name them. I'm gonna put a description. And then here's where, you know, as long as you've got a, an image file on your computer, you just hit choose file, upload that file, and um, put the picture that you want to use for, or the icon that you want to use to uh, denote the marker, and you are ready to go. You know, one thing, Tom, and, and uh, I don't know if this is the best practice or not, but on the fly, trying to make one with everything going on in the shop, we just go out to Google Images and just find a picture of a car being washed and just slap it right in there. It was that simple. Oh, yeah. Google has made... Uh, made image finding very, uh, very easy. And I take full advantage of it. And I recommend everybody else does as well um, because you can find great stuff. So instead of trying to make your own, find something, you know, have some fun with it, right? We, I, we used to run and I hope, I hope we start doing it again. We used to run every once in a while like a contest and we get everybody to post up their special markers on Facebook and, and vote for the winner and stuff. And man, there's some funny ones, you know, dumpster fire and, you know, picture of some basically a lunatic in a straight jacket to denote people who might be a little bit more difficult at the counter. Uh, some, some, some very creative <laughs> shop owners and service writers out there uh, in the auto vitals, uh, in the auto vitals land, I got to tell you. Um, but, but make them, you know, make them fun, make them, you know, your, you know, your personality and your culture. And, and like I said, most importantly, get the service advisors and the technicians to, 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 to uh, give their input, right? And what do they need and how should it look and, and that kind of stuff. And, and it's fun. And when they, when they, you know, 
are involved in that, well, gosh, then they start using it because they, you know, they, they're responsible because they created it. <laughs> so let's wrap up before we go. Let's talk about some of the um, uh, predefined and, and some of the, some different types of special markers that you can create. Um, and, and if you have some suggestions uh, for predefines that maybe we don't have already, uh, let us know on Facebook. Chat it in right here, whatever you want to do. And we're always looking for good ideas to uh, help shops out. So uh, we'd love to build out some more and, and really make that predefined um, library uh, as robust as possible for you. So, you know, some of the great ones. Uh, I'm sorry, Marty, did you have a question, buddy? No. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, some of the great ones that we're used to are, you know, like overnight or walk in, um, you know, tow in. Um, we've got quality control, of course. We've got job specific ones like brakes or oil change or state inspection. Um, we've got some, uh, some great wheel lock key location ones, right? So, you know, center console, door pocket. And the great thing about that too, Marty, now you'll probably agree is that not only do you, hey, that's one of those uh, special markers that you'd want to tag in, in, to the vehicle so that it's there every time it comes in. And not only do you know where to find the wheel lock key, but you know where to put it back. Absolutely. And, and that's always important, right? Um, oh, and so let me back up. I'm sorry. Uh, real quick. Got ahead of myself there. And so um, uh, check out the predefines. Always can create customs. And then if there's something that you think should be in that predefined, like, you know, state inspection was one that we got from the shops in the Facebook forum and smog. And so uh, let us know. We're happy to build out more special markers for you. If you need some more help uh, to create those special markers, uh, of course, your advisor's happy to help you. And you can always go to help.autovitals.com slash training dash digital dash shop. Uh, or, you know, and you can always just go to help.autovitals and then just search. You'll see under the training uh, and you'll see some other um, the, in the uh, uh, Auto Vitals University where you can just do quick look up, put in special marker, and you'll see all the different videos and webinars and collateral that we have in there uh, to help you get those set up. And if you still... Uh, you know, would like some help, of course, call your advisor and, and they'll be more than happy to help you out. And so let's talk a little bit about results before we go. I was digging through our new multi-shop dashboard in the business control panel. So it's real easy for me to find, you know, uh, a, a specific KPI like service advisor efficiency and then go in and look at uh, how that shop has been, uh, you know, across a lot of shops all at once. And then when I see some that I, I, I like, I go in and take a look and see how they've been doing and uh, from a best practices perspective. And this shop I found, um, you know, came on board and, and uh, you know, really started to adopt the digital program uh, in this area here. And then we, we uh, did a couple webinars or did a couple of uh, training sessions with them about um, – special markers and digital communication. And I mean, really did just look at the, the, the difference here. The blue line is their ARO. Uh, the green line is their service advisor efficiency. And, um, you know, like Marty said earlier, if I can shave five minutes off of one task that I do 10, 15 times a day, all of a sudden I have an hour and, and look at that. And then I spend that hour on making more revenue in the shop and selling more work. And, and we really can, can see some incredible numbers like this. I mean, this guy, you know, practically doubled his, his efficiency. Uh, and, you know, the ARO almost doubled as well at the same time. So uh, you can't beat that with a stick. And Marty will tell you, because this uh, might even be his shop. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. I can't remember which one I cut that from. You know, it's just, you know, one of the things is with this whole thing is, you know, hey, let's have a little fun in the process. Yeah, it's work. Let's have fun while we're doing it. And, and the end goal is, is, is we want to improve, improve, you know, sales success, efficiency, and, and what we're putting in the bank. And, and that's really our goal with all this is to communicate more efficiently so we can operate and, and, and improve the bottom line. 
Yeah, exactly. And uh, just a disclaimer, actually, this wasn't your shop, Marty. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, good, good. So I hope you learned something. Uh, I hope you get out there and at least just get started. Use some of the predefines and, and introduce them to the techs and kind of get them started in baby steps, maybe one or two special markers to replace some trips to the counter and then start to build on it from there. Get the techs and the service riders input. What do they need to see? build it into the process and start using it and then keep your eye in that BCP and start looking at those service advisor efficiency numbers. And when you see them coming the right way, you know, it's time to scale that up and do more of it, do more of a good thing. Um, thank you for your attendance. Uh, looking forward to talking with you again next week. Remember the digital shop talk radio is on Wednesday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Next week, we're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to have Matt Fowler back. So if you caught him two weeks ago, and what a great show that was about uh, building effective inspection sheets. He's going to come back and give us the second half of it because, I mean, gosh, we had so much engagement with him and Jeremy. It uh, uh, really blew up and, and time flies, you know. So we've got um, uh, Matt coming back to finish up and give us some more best practice tips about how he runs his inspection sheets. And his looked awesome with that Hunter integration and all that good stuff. And then remember, we're going to have Jeremy back in about four more weeks to see the results of he, what he learned from Matt. He's going to take it in and, 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 and introduce it into his inspection sheets. And then we're going to take a look at his numbers and see, uh, see, see what happens, see the results. So that'll be in a couple more weeks. But uh, Wednesday at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And then, of course, we'll be talking about how-tos and, and uh, the next day in the webinar. And that'll be Thursday at 10 uh, p.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, and we'll be uh, going into the nuts and bolts about how to do the setup. Uh, and like the Hunter integration, we'll give you some, uh, you know, get you started on, on that, on how to get that Hunter integration done if you've got the right equipment. So uh, until then, go out and make some money. Uh, we'll see you next week or talk to you next week. And uh, Marty, fantastic buddy. I appreciate you joining me today and uh, looking forward to having you on uh, many more times in the future. Awesome. I thank everybody for chiming in today, and you guys have a very blessed day. I appreciate your time. All righty. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Bye.